Okay then. <coughs> so there we go. We are now commencing the demo session of machine learning in AI. We've had a fair introduction of each other. Let me also introduce myself. I'm Vijay Shantigiri. I'm the founder of uh, CertiShot. And before CertiShot, uh, uh, we founded a company named as Analogica Software Development Private Limited. And CertiShot is the sister concern of Analogica. And Analogica predominantly deals with uh, data clients in machine learning products. Okay, so I have been doing data into the science of data since about uh, 10 years now. I think the first AI software that we delivered was in 2014. And 2013 14, it started in 2013 and we delivered it in 2014. And uh, it was a it was an eye opener for us. And it was a very funny and strange incident that happened. Uh, that I I actually come from uh, astronomy and space engineering. Okay, I've done my electronics and communication, but uh, uh, because I went into uh, systems engineering related to space, I was supposed to know everything. I was supposed to know electronics, physics, computational sciences, and uh, and of course we had that context of the 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 feeling of mathematics and automation. Right, the whole keywords are this: Can you find the math and the logic behind something, and can you automate it? You're getting what I'm saying? Like, you know, basically it's all about algorithm algorithm a logical step-by-step -step way to do something can you find the basic optimal context of that process and then can you automate it can you make it can you put it on a repeat mode right so that's what the computer is all about it does it's a it's just a machine which is built which has been conceived and built to repeatedly do a task at a rapid pace i mean unprecedented unimaginable pace uh, that it actually surprises us and then and then comes a very unique kind of an algorithm which when executed at the same speed will show signs of intelligence it's not really intelligent it is a speed at which a complicated algorithm is working that for somebody who sees from outside, they feel it is intelligent. Okay, that is what we are trying to decode and demystify now. Whatever you guys have in your mind about AI, maybe you have, have different uh, perspectives. You, you, you're. I'm pretty sure that you've been trying to search through the internet and YouTube, and you would have, you would have gathered enough information by now. But we are going to put everything in context. And because I come from a very uh, mathematical and physics perspective uh, uh, subjects, uh, it, it gives me an ability to play the role of both a data scientist and a machine learning engineer. And from the past 10 years, we've been into this. And it was during the Corona time that when I was invited to give a little, because, you know, it was... Uh, no colleges and nothing, so I was invited to be a guest lecture at a certain university, and that's when it took off the whole edtech thing and certain short and everything. That's when it took off, and uh, so that's how we are into this. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll just right away start. Let me share the screen. Anybody here has any specific question that needs to be addressed? Or you guys are good to go with this flow that we have. Let's just go with the flow that we have and you can, you know, come back and we can always visit certain questions. We can make it into discussion, which will be that is the right way to go about. And uh, OK, Rohini, welcome. Um, uh, all right. So guys, tell me if you are you able to see the screen? I've shared the screen. And are you able to see the screen? Yeah, I can see the screen. It's a wide screen, right? 
Hmm. Okay, so there is no set pattern. See, I have a pattern here, okay, and I can just go about doing this stuff, but every time I try to do it a little different. So I am going to start with something different today. Okay, what I'm going to start with is um, an ancient um, razor, they call it. Razor means, how many of you are from how many of you understand the Kannada word Gade? Gade Matu. Gade Matu. Gade Matu means a wise quote, uh, a sentence which conceptualizes or embodies certain kind of wisdom correct that's what gadi matu is how many of you here are from canada karnataka how many of you not i'm from karnataka okay parikshit is Shreyas. i'm from karnataka okay apurva. apurva who doesn't understand canada here also from karnataka great apurva what about you and rohini yes sir i'm from karnataka Super and Shreya yes, sir. I'm Karnataka. Oh, everybody is Karnataka. Super, right? That makes my life easy, right? Ivaganan, I'll also be using a little bit of uh, Kannada as well, okay? Because that makes it easy for me to give the whole context out. Even Namge and Agbadi there, we are trying to learn something very complicated. See, very complicated in a foreign language okay yen proper problem yen idralli foreign language alien problem foreign language will problem yen andre suppose you have a word like called gradient okay na gradient descent antha na algorithm okay gradient descent there is an AI concept called gradient descent. This gradient descent is the main core of, of all ML algos. Okay. Gradient descent and the nimagiradu sound aste. For you people, it's a sound. Now I'll have to explain it. But for a native English speaker, gradient is an English word. Descent is also an English word. Nivu gradient descent na combine maadi e yerdu words na ml ga apply maadi dira. Ad aur gartha agathe. Yar again native English speakers. Net na ve no naam native English speaker alla. Naam ge gradient descent na takshna bari sound aste. Na sound na naav explain maadi concept ha kondi. Aam ge gradient meaning eno descent meaning. Vella circus maad aad mein naam ge gradient descent ya kantar apa machine na ne concept ke anta aam ge gartha agathe. Okay, so that's the reason why I always, you know, just so that we can do it faster. I, it was good. It's good that I have a lot of people who are from Karana speaking, um, you know, background here. This is good actually. So, how we manana now? Okay, so, anyways, Gade Matu, Nimgela Gotu, Gade Matu, Dreno, Gondo. Wisdom in the Obrudu, experience in the Bandironta, Ika Kaikasaradra by Mosuru. Okay. So, Itharala Gadamathi Kedir. In mathematics, in science, the whole of scientific thinking, scientific thinking, there is a very interesting Gadamath. It's called as Occam's razor. Razor and Rene Gade. Okay. Occam's Gade and Occam uh, Yaro uh, Wilhelm of Occam and Baida. Wilhelm of Occam. Occam was a place name. Okay. Wilhelm Manono Occam and Lida. Ah, Wilhelm Manono won the Gade Mat Kotida. Ah, Gade Matu Yellar use Martidru. 
ಇದು ಯಾವಾಗ ಇದು ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ಸ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ನೋ ಓಕೆ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಗು ಅವಾಗ ಏನು ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಕಲ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಈ ಥರ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೋರ್ಸು ಸಿಲೆಬಸ್ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಇರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಒಂದು ಏನೋ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಇತ್ತು ಆ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಅವನೇನು ಹೇಳ್ತಿದ್ದ ಈ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಡಿಸಿಷನ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಈಸಿ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಅವನು ಹೇಳಿದ್ದ ಯಾರೋ ವಿಲ್ಹ್ಯಾಮ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದ ಆ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಏನು ಅಂತ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋಣ ಅದಾದಮೇಲೆ ಆ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಮೇಲೇ ಎ ಐನೂ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕರಿಯರು ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಲೈಫು ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಆಯಿತಾ ಸೊ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಯು ಕಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ಏನು ಯು ಕಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಆನ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಗೇವ್ ರೈಸ್ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಇವಾಗ ನೋಡಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ವಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಆಕಮ್ಸ್ ರೇಸರ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಸಮಬಡಿ ಹಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಗೂಗಲ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಫೈನ್ ಆಕಮ್ಸ್ ರೇಸರ್ ಸೇಸ್ here's the quote when deciding between two competing theories when deciding between two competing theories we should have competing theories choose the theory which has least assumption this is the fundamental thought of all scientific process scientific thinking ge ide main ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂತಾರಲ್ಲ ಮೇನ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಏನಂದರೆ ವೆನ್ ಡಿಸೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಟೂ ಕಂಪೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಥಿಯರೀಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಲೈನ್ ಮಾಡಪ್ಪ ಟೂ ಕಂಪೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಥಿಯರೀಸ್ ಕಂಪೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಥಿಯರೀಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ನಾ ಓಕೆ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ ಥಿಯರೀಸ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನಿಮ್ಗೇನು ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಅಸಮ್ಷನ್ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಿಕ್ಕಿದ್ದೆಲ್ಲ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಯ್ತಾನೆ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ನಾಟ್ so we identify two clusters here which you are not able to connect competing theories least assumption let's decode this competing theories let's go by example let's give ourselves two competing theories hmm suppose there was a person there was a student who was supposed to join today suppose and suppose andre one theory adu adu on the hypothesis suppose a person named q okay was supposed to join this demo but q did not join now i have two theories why q did why may why q may not have joined like as as a you know as my counselor and my team would have to ask this question as to why q did not find, join right i don't i don't I, they will put different theories now you put you to help me put a theory theory a um internet connection issue maybe b got busy somewhere theory c got kidnapped okay like this you can put many things which one do you think you will choose if you were to choose one of this a a why not b i don't know i said a okay anyone else clearly you will not choose got kidnapped clearly you will not choose this 
Uh, Parikshit, can you tell me why you would not choose this? Uh, because I don't think he's got kidnapped. Like, uh, can you dig into that feeling a little more? And that's, you know, I mean, uh, highly I, unlikely. Yeah, it's very unlikely that he, he gets kidnapped. Yes, highly unlikely. Got busy now. Now between got busy somewhere and internet connection issue, what is more likely? What is more likely that the person can get busy with something else or on that day when the demo was supposed to happen, the person is now facing internet connection. What is more likely to happen? Getting busy somewhere is more likely or on that day of the demo, the person wants to, but the person has internet connection issue. Uh, B, I guess. Right? Yes. Yeah, you, you're getting that, right? Correct. So on a scale of you can say less likely you can say more likely and most likely guys are you all understanding what what theory i'm trying to put forth here q unknown barbekage did not join nan nam team assume madle beko q yak join madlilla anta so adak mur theory bantu internet connection issue agirbodu ello busy agbodu illa kidnap agutta mur yadral one nan choose maadi mund hogbek iga q ge eno baribek nan on phone etta illa reply martilla mail martilla so you know maybe you know the answer not interested to join this is also one of the reasons illi why did we not choose got kidnapped because if you choose that he got kidnapped you will have to answer too many questions who kidnapped why he got kidnapped what was you have to answer all of this no for you to assume because this is assumption this is an assumption you are assuming a theory which internally has many assumptions so if you want to take less risky decisions you have to first list all decisions and evaluate which decision is or which decision has least assumption in it or in deciding that so that's what this statement is all about when deciding between two competing theories and very two on the we can also remove this two you can say when deciding between competing theories like a theory a theory b three c choose the theory which has least assumption so that is the most less less risky assumption that you will base your next step on okay so basically all decision science rises or stems out of this philosophical thinking now how many of you guys understood what i said how many of you guys really connected with how, uh, how many of you guys think that now from from now onwards you will incorporate this in your life that is something very important that we have to understand that everything that we are looking now looking at you know all the math the computer science and everything 
at one point of time all these were just you know these kind of theories but um, now it has become a complete mm -hmm. somebody has a question yes they have raised their hands do they have any questions with them no 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 i just asked them no no they i just asked them who how many of them will incorporate this and uh, i think that's the reason they raised their hand oh okay okay sorry sorry to interrupt correct no guys that's the reason why you raised the hand right yes sir right Anyway, this is everything here is getting recorded, so you will get a recorded version later. <clears throat> Let me get into the next step of our. Uh, what did we learn so far? We've just learned that there is a system to decide some stuff, and there's a logical way to arrive at that decision. <clears throat> Very clearly stated element. If the machine has to take this decision, machine, now the machine is taking this decision. That's what you're observing, right? Your chat GPTs. This chat GPT, if you say hi, it automatically prints, hi, how are you? How may I help you? This is not something like if somebody prints hi then print hello how are you this is not getting executed the chat GPT is not a, co a conglomeration of if and else you have to first understand this i'm pretty sure all of you at some point of time have done computation some point of time have written a computer program and you may know these are all the part of control statements. If this, then do this. If do if this, then else do this. Right? Condition, right? This is this chat GPT is not working on this condition. It is something else. It is using a different kind of algorithmic setup, an algorithmic algebra that it is getting. Yeah, automated and computed so that your answer hi how are you or whatever you are asking it is getting printed all of that all of this works around certain principles what are those first thing numbers then emotions then comes computation then comes algebra calculus probability and statistics which will Combine, which will make or embody, model the emotion and the numbers. Algebra, characters, property, and statistics will embody the emotion and the numbers to finally build a algorithm which is intelligent or looks intelligent your work as an MILA engineer is not to just learn what MLA engineering is it is also to understand clearly that an MLA algorithm is not intelligent it is just a very clever, highly complicated pipeline of 
algorithm which embodies all your stuff this is the fact this is the stuff that we have to understand and all of this all this emotion and numbers that you saw here this emotion and numbers this is your data so we'll come to this the data centric view of machine learning in ai very important stuff so let me put this here anyway as i told you you will get the recording so you will get all uh, you know material which has been discussed here for your reference again to watch and learn again that's fine now let's come to data so who is generating this data we are generating this hmm? now when we have to understand the nature of data we have to understand the nature of reality itself the nature nature of the reality around humans we should start from here okay in because now see you are a professional you are not entering some kind of a course or a degree their degrees and a certificate doesn't matter here what matters is a change of mindset you cannot see you are paying us you if you going to join the course you will be paying us but for what so that you can get paid you see the difference the large jump somebody you want somebody to pay you to be a professional ai or ml engineer isn't it you don't have to say yes you know it for for real so you the way you see the world the way you see mathematics where you see computation should completely change but you don't have to doubt yourself whether you will be able to achieve this because you're already crossed a certain age you're not a kid you're not a 15 year old 18 year old confused career person you're already you've already crossed a certain age at this age during uh, the ancestral you know in the cave times and whatever our age group is now between uh, uh, between let's say you guys must be between 20 to 24 or 25 maybe max uh yeah even 20 20 to 26 maybe you guys all are all between this age and this age is a prime age to learn anything okay so you will have to relearn everything so i'm going to be teaching you everything thinking itself from the beginning so you'll have to bear with me on that and the reason why i do this is because this is what makes you really ready for the real world not just by hearting some algorithms and stuff otherwise it's like you will learn how to use a hammer but you will not learn when to use a hammer you know that a hammer has to be hammered but when when do you use a hammer when do you use a cutting plier when do you use a spanner you know these realities have to be there and realities that is that is why i'm trying to put a map to this reality and what are the kinds of realities that we live in three kinds of realities first reality transcendental reality second reality personal reality third reality transactional reality are you guys there transcendental personal transactional now the transcendental reality is between you and creator or creation why am i teaching you all this philosophical stuff because artificial intelligence you are trying to build but you should know the construct of intelligence itself in the first place this is what an intelligent being does now artificially you want to get something done then you should realize it's a very different ball game transcendental reality 
the relationship between between you create creator creation or maybe i missed one more thing what you which we usually call god any god any god that you pray what do you pray for luck wish you no know, protection certainty correct you don't want to wake up to an uncertain world where anything can happen you want to get up you want 90% of the life to be same only 10% you want appa thumba bore aagtide yenu different illa ashte bekagirudu 10% full 100% change aagibitra adu nimge size kodakagala correct alla anta nam conditions iruthe even from our creator that all the transaction that happens in your mind is transcendental reality second one is your personal reality relation between you and yourself that is between you and your body okay your body is aching you get up you've got a beard you want to shave it and there's a lot of personal stuff that we undergo okay it has nothing to do with transcendental it has nothing to do with your transaction it's just between you and yourself okay so that's one reality now comes the main stuff <clears throat> the transactional reality is between you and others the world the apps the government what not you know now you understanding the transaction all three are important okay we are producing we are producing a lot of data lots of data because of this reality transaction reality otherwise your personal reality is supposed to go into a diary even this one transcendental reality in your mind or into your diary you don't share your diary details these are all secrets okay you share this this is getting shared this one is a shared reality with everybody else now this shared reality you will have to somehow understand that this shared reality's data is being collected this data that is getting collected is getting pushed okay so this data that is getting collected is being pushed into the ml algorithm so that it can predict predict what predict your personal reality with this prediction it is going to tell see this connection this prediction link that i just drew for you you should you should again pay attention to this all that data that came out of your transaction reality got collected and an ml and ai algorithm works on it so that it can now predict your personal reality like what personal reality like uh, what to sell to this person should we sell them hair oil car insurance what ad to show should we show because that's what it insurance ad a car ad and hair oil ad what is the probable age 
what is the probable income source all of that when it gets predicted when this gets predicted there is a sense of low risk a sense of it when there is a sense of low risk there is higher investment okay so this is what the whole world is moving around so what you should be focusing on now is data okay this data is very important so again let me get back and let me Anyways, you'll get this discussion or whole video. But anyone, does anyone has any kinds of uh, you know a thread or something to discuss here? Something which uh, they can add. You know, you can add also. Sometimes it's not just everything I know. You also have experiences, so you can, if you want, can add to what we've been discussing. Anyone has anything to add? from your experience no okay let's just put this all right so hmm. again coming back to <clears throat> data your data are of many kinds your data are of now now i guess i have established the importance of data somehow this data becomes the fuel to the ml algorithms so that they can do the prediction and you know everything the, the whole risk and the low and everything uh, just works out from there but the data being the few one must understand what different kinds of data are out there now to understand this we'll have to again go back to the most basic understanding of again reality this this time i'm not talking about realities that a human being uh, experiences i am talking about the perspective reality the perceptions okay so what what do you think human being does a brain the brain of a human being what is what is it, what is this brain actually designed for brain of humans what do you think is the basic stuff the basic stuff <clears throat> let me tell you or you can you can i'll tell you and if you can find another argument for it i'll be you know, happy to entertain that uh, one you count in fact one i should have written count i should have written 
feel then you count and third one you decide did you think at the core of everything this is what we do you feel you count you decide correct take for example this whole demo you are attending this demo to get a feel for it and after that there will be a counting involved how many hours of this demo how many days will i finish this course in how much will it cost me you know there are a lot of questions which comes around the numbers first the feeling if the feeling doesn't go well you will not come to the counts now based on the feel and the count you take a decision you can just hold this thought in your you know mind even after we finish this demo tonight just think about this what else do you think we do nothing else everything boils down to feeling counting and decision now that everything boils down to feeling counting and decision the data that gets generated because of your transactional reality this data is also around this feeling counting and decision isn't it so when you feel something you cannot use a number to define it so you have language language to express the feelings then you've got numbers to count and then you've got logic and wisdom and your mentors and guidance and all that combined to decide simple you know you got one dog running your way you just wait and watch whether it's going to run all the way or it's just you know or it's just trying to act or fool you into submission or something but if you see if there are 10 dogs running your way you will not even wait and see you will just run that's the feeling that counts can produce sometimes feeling is influenced by count sometimes count is influenced by feelings there is an always there is a continuous interplay between these two aspects which are happening in our mind and when it was decided that uh, who decided that alan turing and von neumann these two great intelligent being were the ones responsible for today's computer as well as today's ai both these people it's very strange this the story of computer science is it's really remarkable because this person von neumann and alan turing you must somebody who's into computer science must know this correct the von neumann machine sorry the von neumann architecture of the computer and turing machines okay now these guys were the ones who conceptualized the proper first time a computer what is a computer supposed to do it's supposed to compute it is supposed to compute fast that's what the whole idea was but it is supposed to take all your counts and churn all the numbers and get you uh, the next number right that's what it's supposed to do but now what has happened is we have an algorithm which comes from the world of humans and it affects the world of humans okay it can it need not just be numbers i mean this effect can be emotional as well so what it means it means that this effect and this emotional effect still has to be computed 
it cannot magically just appear it has to be computed there is a computer algorithm involved but what is the fundamental fuel for this algorithm data what kind of data emotional data what is this emotional data this emotional data is data related to language now see the problem language is text text and emotion how do you transform this so that an algo can understand your language your text your emotion what is rating what is good what is ugly what is bad what is amazing what is excellent how does because what is an algorithm an algorithm is just a set of instructions a set of instructions which are computed at a very fast pace by a computer and computer is built by human beings and it is built on numbers so what is the idea the idea is how do you convert text to numbers this is the main fundamental bridge that needs to be established in your mind first you know how these numbers are computed faster then you know how this text is getting into numbers now from the computing the numbers computing the numbers itself is your is done by your programming languages out of which the most successful programming language which is really making a big wave right now is python programming so we will have to first whether we like it or not have to master this okay and it doesn't matter i mean if you keep doing something long enough you will eventually master it i mean that's a given that's the beauty of the brain okay only thing is you need a mentor who can make you believe it and keep making you and keep rewarding you or punishing you or you know just make you do it or build an environment where you are motivated to get up and do it that's what is required otherwise you can do you can learn everything anywhere even by following a book that's not a problem okay only thing is you you should know what direction to go in and what are the first steps second step like a gym instructor right a gym instructor you die directly the gym instructor won't make you lift barbells unless he gives you a four arm training otherwise you won't be able to lift yourself correct so that's how this mentoring works so we just know the right step right time because we have already seen it for the last 10 years and what is the first important stuff and my experience first hurdle for you guys is getting your programming skills right once you've done once you do this then you try to establish this the text to numbers what is this this is your natural language processing because why you want to process the natural language of humans you want to process the moment you want to process it it's there's a computer involved and the moment there's a computer involved this natural language has to be transformed to numbers now how do you transform a word like hey boss how are you how do you how do you convert this into a number i mean how do you you ask this see every you ask every silly question you can and find answers to it your course is complete there is nothing like uh, you know we we teach you a set of uh, steps and then you become an ml engineer no an ml engineer is a person who will ask all possible questions like this h e y b o double s h r u how will you tell the computer that e comes after h and y comes after e and then there is a space and then hey boss how are you makes sense but boss hey how are you doesn't make sense how do you tell the computer this you have to be able to tell it it's not magic 
some some logic has to be set here now you should get this grand picture slowly as you unfold this mystery you will have to find answers for all of these silly questions which were always staring at you right so the part of my part of a mentor's journey is to make you comfortable in seeing these questions we were we are all we are all born intelligent actually if you were not educated like the way you were and uh, you would have asked all these questions yourself like how is it possible how is it because you want answers for everything and you should be wanting answers for everything okay so that's what i was trying to get at there is the whole reality which is based on our data the human brain is generating that data and come to think of it the fundamental idea is feel count and decide that's what we can do if that is all we can do then that's the kind of data that that we generate and your feel and account and decide is your text data your count number data and your decision data that is getting collected and most of your text data is around language that is used to express feelings and the numbers to count and the logic and the wisdom combined together to make decisions and we just learnt you know about decision we learnt a small uh 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 a razor or a, a wise word right occam's razor this is what we learned so once that is done we understood that there are two aspects of ai one is your programming language itself and then your natural language processing which is when you do all your processing of the natural language and there's also another aspect here which is very also very important in the present context that uh, is of a different kind of data okay as a different kind because the kinds of data as it changes here you will see text data fine what about music so these are audio patterns okay so there is natural language processing there is now this is called voice processing now this is about how do you convert audio patterns to numbers that's the second question next image this is image processing next is your video fine it's video processing okay now all of these are getting to what all of this are eventually the challenge is how does it get converted to numbers okay this is the main gist now this directly doesn't get converted to numbers it gets converted to a vector or a tensor why because we are not just see i just told you i've just i'm just giving you an idea here because we were dealing with this natural language language processing and i gave you an, an example hey bro okay this is a set of two words which together makes sense the vector now tell me what is the what is the definition of vector scalar and vector scalars vectors scalar as only magnitude vector has both magnitude and nobody direction direction this direction information is embodied only by a vector and that is what it says hey e comes after h y comes after e there is a space then o comes after this that and what comes after what is actually direction information 
so a scalar quantity cannot hold it a vector can hold it and many vectors together becomes your matrix so a lot of matrix manipulation and multiplication everything eventually now gets converted to matrix only nlp gets converted to matrix voice gets converted to matrix image so always is a set of pixels okay and video is also set of pixels and moving in time many many set of pixels at a particular this a it's a vector of or a matrix of matrix is a video so basically you are now going to be trained in looking at this world in a very computational way okay this is this is what your journey is going to be and we're going to be doing in when it comes to your um, you know machine learning and ai program the predominantly the focus is going to be on python programming this is the given i mean this this has to be mastered and then there is under python programming there is the first step is your automation which is the basic programming uh, modules which consists of your data structures data structures and you must understand now data structures means all your text data your number data your decision data all has different different structures so you have to understand those data structures then comes your conditions conditional statements which is around your if else elif then comes your loops your for loop and your while loop after that comes your functions all this is done this you know this whole thing what you're doing this is true for this i mean particularly this aspect any new language that you learn any new language c c sharp java javascript and everything wherever you go whatever i put it in dotted lines na this you have to learn for every, every every language but when it comes to python programming python programming language makes our life easy by giving you different kinds of ready made packages ready made packages that can help you do natural language processing it's going to help you do video processing image voice you know more and there's a lot this this continuous development these packages are being built by a huge support community of uh, python and to be able to understand these packages there are certain fundamental concepts like your object oriented then uh, there's a package called numpy numerical python then there's a package called matplotlib then there's a package called uh, pandas this is for data analysis then there is a package called uh, sky kit learn all for ml this is a whole ml bundle and a part, as a part of sky kit learn you will have different packages internally for you know for deep learning for a lot of other uh, different kinds of uh, the gp the generative pretrained model the rag models and all that which will come later first uh, first let's understand the whole context it goes deeper and deeper and then uh, there's be a there'll be a situation here which is going to directly be related to your client problem now the client is going to ask you that is when you that's the whole, these packages come when you get placed okay when you are in a part of the company the company will decide that boss we have bought this particular package from a well renowned uh, group and we're going to be using it so you will use the documentation and get all the stuff done however before that you would have had enough 
hands-on experience solving these kind of stuff now that's what where i'm going to be you know stopping and i'll also give you a glimpse of what should be the foundational basics that you need to start off with when it comes to machine learning and AI. I'm going to be doing this uh, in the first class when we start. That is the foundation of mathematical thinking. Okay, Why algebra? Why calculus? Why coordinate systems? Why probability? Why statistics? We're going to be understanding each and every uh, system and we are going to start building the appreciation that there is no way other we could have done anything else and I have put all this together in this small capsule called the story of X okay so yeah so that's that's what I'm going to I don't want to you know take a continuous two hours lecture it usually doesn't serve the purpose and I hope I've been able to make you understand what is required here if not then i can summarize uh, meanwhile let me ask if you guys have any question here at this point of time i would like you to guide the session forward so that we can understand and address some answers or the questions from students go ahead let's ask me a question if you have parikshit Oh, uh, no questions, sir. Okay. Shreyas? Yeah, I don't, have that. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Apurva? No questions, sir. Okay. Netravati? Sir, no, sir. Madhu? Madhu? No. Was it so boring that it didn't even invoke a question? Or is it so clear everything that you don't have any questions anymore? Which one is true? At least there must be some question, right? I should have, should have you know, I probably like to feel that I was able to invoke a certain sense of curiosity uh, because that's the first step that we have to do is to invoke that curiosity in the student. I would like to know if have I been able to scratch a little of that curious you? Are you getting more interested in this subject? Are you getting the idea? Yeah, Parikshit? Yes, sir, kind of. Okay, okay, Shreya, see how you answered. Apurva, what about you? Yes, sir, it's, it's interesting. And uh, Netravati and Madhu? Yes. Right. Madhu and I guess is... Perfect. So let me summarize before we... See, as you see in front of you, this ML algorithms, right? This is actually be... It's going to be... There's a, there's a set of 12 different algorithms and these algorithms are structured under different kinds of machine learning okay the types types of machine learning so supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforcement learning all this will be taught. I mean, you have to be able to clearly see what kind of problem, what kind of solution exists. Okay, everything is going to be taught in a structured, detailed way. But all these are just, you know, names say. What is the most important stuff? The most important stuff is you asking this question this particular question how am i converting language to numbers how am i converting voice to numbers how am i converting image to numbers how am i converting video to numbers 
basically whatever data the human being is generating you will have to take that data and feed it to the algorithm this feeding is called training the algorithm but training the algorithm means this data can be anything as you saw text but training has to be done on the computer so this text has to be first converted to numbers which is nothing but your vectors and then the training commences once the training is done you have an ml algo trained called a machine learning model you have machine learning model in front of you this model has to be now packaged and shipped to the client now let me build a model in front of you right now okay so that you go away you take away a sense of that model so that you can understand why all the things that i have been talking are important let me build a model in front of you now okay a model a model to predict a model a machine learning model does what an ml model does only one thing it predicts so i'm going to show you some prediction now i'm going to plot uh age of people here and i'm going to be plotting salaries of people here salaries fine let me put age from uh, 0 to 100 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 okay oh all right so this is 100 well, let me just back this off this is where the 100 is so fine i'm happy here and uh, you have packages let's say uh, 2 lakhs 4 lakhs 6 8 10 12 14 16 lpa okay and then i'm going to just randomly randomly just put a few dots so i'm generating when i'm doing this i'm generating what i'm generating data what data the data is somebody this point suppose i take this point somebody who is around 20 years old is earning 5 lakhs per annum another one this particular data somebody around 50 years is earning 8 lakhs per annum this point i am putting here the moment i put a point in this reference frame the moment i put a point in a reference frame i am putting this dot as 50 comma 8 this is the most important stuff in machine learning in ai plotting because bringing your text when i say how do you convert text to numbers i'm talking about this how do you convert all this emotional information into a reference frame you have to bring it to a reference frame so here i'm going to now build a model but when you look at it see the trend here it is moving like this correct as age increases salary is increasing somehow this is moving like this so if i were to build a theory this theory this is a theory and my theory is that the salaries increase like this suppose my friend's theory says the salary doesn't increase like that the salary somehow for him says the salary moves like this which one do you think you will support which theory will you support this the theory a or the theory b the 
just by looking you will, you will be able to say go ahead anybody just unmute and give me your which one do you think is more likely which one is a a right it it, it makes sense because somehow a is in the right in the middle of that data set it is sort of approximating the trend of this salary age thing better now all you have to do now is understand that this is also a straight line and this is also a straight line and what is the equation of a straight line it is y is equal to mx plus c what is this m c x and y m c x and y is first of all your y and x are your axis and m is a slope slope means this slope this this slope is this is also slope see this is also slope illi on slope ide nodi ee illi on on ball bitre id slope agutta ninge hogutane ಈಗ ಇಲ್ಲೊಂದು ಬಾಲ್ ಉಳ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಸೀದಾ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಸ್ಲೋಪ್ ಇದೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಬಟ್ ಆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಸ್ಲೋಪ್ ಇದೆ ಅನ್ನೋದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವೇನು ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ದ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ನೋ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಮನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ರೈಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕಲರ್ this is what this is here this is your dy so this m is nothing but dy by dx it's very easy i mean you are not doing this algebraic calculation uh, calculus here everything is done by your which one your package your numpy is here no numerical python it does everything you should know the meaning of mathematics here this dy by dx is this and x is this plus c is this thing where it is cutting it off here so here according to my equation my by by inspection this was supposed to be 3 so this will be 3.5 so your c is 3.5 and your dy by dx somehow i feel um because this is not scaled it's suppose if it is it is works only when it is scaled but by the looks of it you see this percentage how many this can be put here i feel uh, dy by dx you know this length suppose you just take this length the real length of it how much percentage of this is this do you guys feel that i can put it's mostly 1 by 2 actually yeah so you can feel it is 0.5 your divided by dx is 0.5 because you see this change what is it saying first of all you understand what is this saying dy by dx what is it saying dy by dx is saying that i have to change two times I mean i have to really shift two times to generate one shift in y axis i have to change two times in x axis to get one shift in y axis that's why i just took it as 1 by 2 0.5 so you have y is equal to 0.5 into x plus 3.5 and what is y y is your salary what is x x is your age so you have salary is equal to 0.5 into whatever the x is plus you add a 3.5 to it okay now just randomly pick one point let's try to predict the age of a person who is 25 years old i don't have that prediction you see i don't have it but i can do this here just put 25 here 0.5 into 25 plus 3.5 what is it 0.5 25 12.5 12.5 plus 3.5 is equal to 12 15 16 lpa 
so the 25 year old person has a salary of 16 lpa is what it is say okay now this is not as straightforward as, as it is because i have done a lot of assumptions here okay this line can still shift it's not a perfect fit and there's a lot of different uh, data sets that has to be cleaned because there are a lot of outliers now all this cleaning data pre-processing all that is required after doing all of this again you apply the simple what you just learnt here is called linear regression okay so whatever you are seeing here is your machine learning model this is your model like this every model that you build looks like this only no matter what that model is it has to be a algebraic relationship so this is what i was trying to make you understand the more complicated the problem because see you want to predict you want to predict salary based on age fine you can nobody is stopping you hello am i audible yes sir yes sir. yeah okay yeah 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 so we we can predict the salary based on age but i can also add in qualification correct so now I have two vectors. I want to predict the salary based on age and qualification. Maybe I can add another dimension saying I want to predict the age, qualification and and degree. Uh, qualification is degree. Um, let's say experience, years of experience. I'm, I'm, I keep on adding newer and newer dimensions here. So this equation becomes more and more complicated. So that is what you're going to be learning how this complication is handled by and you don't have to worry about that that is handled by your numpy and especially your scikit-learn algorithm this this package right Trail different algorithms coming under supervised and unsupervised and your we won't be doing reinforcement Because this cannot be taught in a lab environment. That's the reason. Okay. So, but we, we will be doing supervised, unsupervised, and under supervised, your deep learning is also there. Okay. Under supervised, your natural language processing is also there. Everything is supervised. Only a few, only one unsupervised machine learning algorithm, that's your K means clustering problem. So, and different variations of that will lead you to unsupervised learning, and we'll understand all the context around this. Okay, anybody's got any question? Did you guys understand how that's the reason why I keep telling you that you know just this data pre processing will require the, the knowledge of stats because there's a reason, there's a way you should remove the data and all that. Everything will be taught in a structure. You have this, this syllabus copy with you, and you can go ahead and look at all this stuff there. And uh, guys, my advice to you is it's doable but uh, it requires consistency I and mean, it, it really it you really have to yeah somebody has raised a hand Hari Prasad uh, sorry uh, Pariksha tell me yeah how do you get the 3.5 the C values 3.5 mm -hmm. I'll get it I'll get it this one wherever this line is intercepting here no you see this this black dot, I'm putting the big black dot. Yeah, yeah. This is the intercept. It's called the Y intercept. Okay. If this was, if this was the model that you wanted to see, suppose I take this model, then you have too much here. See this? This is a long one. This is a short one. So yeah, yeah. I can see one, two, three. So there are one, two, three. There are how many of this is here? One, two, three, four. Right. So you are now looking at four. So your model would have been Y is equal to 0 0.25 into x plus where is this touching 6 7 7 now this would have been the model for this okay now we have okay. to now put in the value and see which one is more likely to predict properly okay okay 
so like that this what now there are many options i mean your algorithm is actually going to go across this data set it is going to draw every possible line for you okay don't think that it is directly coming to this it is going to experiment with all possible lines so that it gives you the best possible model the lind regress algorithm it's going to it's going to compute the y axis the y intercept here and models for everything that you just uh, saw okay everything that i drew the lines the pink lines everything can be a model but we will eventually see we can visually inspect that this is the best model around it correct because you can see this number of points here the number of points here are closest there are number of points in fact i could have done a little better by taking this a little above so you would have seen a different dy by dx then and probably much more uh, closer to the model okay so this is the model i mean what i'm trying to say is there's no magic it's always algebra and which is good it's you should feel happy that that's all there is to this it's it's doable if you really sit and do it consistently and understand well only thing is if you are not fond of logic and math and computer science, uh, computation if you are not fond of these things then you will not find the connection if you don't find that connection then you probably you know will be better off being around data centric jobs which are like uh, data analysis full stack data analysts and so on and so forth so i guess that will be that will work out better we will we'll discuss you can get in touch with me if you have any questions anyone has any other questions shreyas uh, apurva netravati yeah i was having the same question that uh, about 1.5 but i okay. got answer perfect okay apurva okay uh, madhu excuse me sir yes please so is that uh, data science is full of ml or uh, ml is a part of data science ml is a part of data science actually ml is a part of i don't know it's like you know let me just i it depends how you would like to see it i mean these are all word plays okay uh, netravati these are all yes sir these are all just statements people somebody somebody uh, gave a fancy word called because machines are learning let's call it machine learning okay you need no words right fancy words you need like branding something somebody said hey it's a science of data that we're dealing with let's call it data science somebody will say it's called it's all about decisions so we should call it decision science okay basically this is what you should remember no matter what they call it today or tomorrow you may be called an ai engineer an ml engineer or a data scientist or anybody that you are you should be one person you should be able to think mathematically about data so you can call yourself anything a machine learning engineer a machine learning scientist this is in scientist data scientist whatever but you should be you should have the ability to see text and see it as numbers see basically see every data and understand that how will i put this data as a set of numbers and get my computation done this is what you're supposed to be thinking baki you can people can call you anything it doesn't matter what if they call you suppose uh, netravati i'll say yes sir they will google will hire you and say i'm going to call you a blah blah engineer but i'm going to pay you 30 lpa and uh, somebody else a small company will say i'm going to call you an ml engineer but i'll call you i'll pay you 6 lpa which one will you take blah blah engineer correct it doesn't matter <laughs> what, what you are yeah, so. called correct and you'll say yeah, i have done data science and yeah i would like to do and you call me anything doesn't matter for me because i want my times worth 
and my, if I'm doing a lot of hard work, then you might as well pay me properly, right? So like that it is. It doesn't matter. Everything around data, around algorithm, okay? You will, the whole idea of this course is to grow beyond all these titles, okay? And this is probably the only course in this world, probably, I'm not saying my course, the subject. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. So, what is the difference between supervised algorithm and unsupervised algorithm, sir?
Esa, esa, esa. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.